Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back. It's your girl, Yummy.com. And we have another episode of Minority Replacement. Um, guys, you know it's my favorite thing to do. I mean, other than ship up videos and talking about BTS and being black. My favorite pastimes. I love making minority replacement videos and I have been listening to you guys. One person. One person who watches and is my friend as well. And I'm going to do a classic, okay? A classic and that is... We're taking it back to the 80s and going to the breakfast club yes we are going to be talking about the breakfast club today and how and who we are going to replace them with young minorities in the business now yeah <laughs> with that being said we are only going to replace the members of the breakfast club not the principal principal vernon not the parents because they're barely in it we are only focusing on the actual breakfast club. Some of the answers I may give you today may shock you, but deal with it, okay? So here we are going to start from the bottom up. I don't know, like billing-wise. I think billing-wise it's the bottom up. We are going to start with Brian. Brian, if you don't remember, was the nerd of the group, you know, in that whole spiel that uh the rebel gives at the end yeah it's Bri brian's nerd one he is perpetually known for his geeky stereotypes has kind of suicidal undertones that are a little bit questionable and worrisome but he also is a little bit desperate to fit in and with that being said i think we should pl pick someone who has a history of playing nerdy characters and that is iman Benson. Iman Benson in her latest role I believe was in Black AF where she played a young black intellectual daughter of Kenya Burris. Also I'm not sure but I think back in the day Broadway might have killed someone for my dad. And she played that role so well it was like kind of the antithesis antithesis to Zoe who is um obviously the daughter from Blackish. So she was kind of her antithesis, like this, this like kind of um, more self-aware version. I'm making this documentary as a part of my application to NYU Film School next year. But I didn't ask my dad for any of this. A seven-man camera crew, really? They shot The Revenant with less than this, okay? So you know how in most marriages there's like a balance? If, if one person eats too much, then the other person eats like a bird. Or if one person drinks too much, then the other one's sober. Yeah, that, that's not her parents. Mm. Yeah, they're both just equally horrible people. <sighs> the worst. Exactly. Oh my gosh. When it comes to like pettiness, fiscal irresponsibility, and basically being on the same page about the wrong shit, they're like the Menendez brothers. Hey, no, they're not like the Menendez brothers. They are the Menendez brothers. Yeah. But also very nerdy and um, kind of uh, awkward and kind of wanted to fit in with her family but didn't know where she fit in with her family and I feel like she could very vibe with that character. She is also just a fantastic actress. I know what to do so I just hit record. Does it help? It sure as shit doesn't hurt. Huh. Does that mean we don't have to sit here and smile at them? No. It just means it's gonna be a hell of a lot more fun. Did you get sent to jail for that? Why yes Joy you can but you probably go bankrupt first trying to fight it. Mm. She is eloquent. She is uh, very funny, very um, facing forward, and very focused. And I really like that about her. So that's what we're gonna go with for Brian, our nerd. But I'm never gonna back down. Take a look at all my demons, then I smack down. Then we have Andrew, our jock. Now, Andrew, we obviously want to pick someone who looks like they can fit the jock physique. Not necessarily looks like a wrestler, but, you know, could pick not me up. Someone else up. Maybe Iman Benson. Maybe pick her up. I don't know why he would need to do that, uh, but uh, just say he did. Anyways, with that being said, I wanted to give this person to a man I have always admired for his chesticles and his brain and his lovely hair, 
Jordan Rodriguez. Jordan Rodriguez, y'all. I first saw Jordan Rodriguez in a show called Dance Academy um, that was in Australia. But it was this show about ballet. He was a hip hop dancer. He was adorable. I had this cute little mole. I was just like, I love him. I love him. But daddy, I love him. Um, then he moved on to The Fosters, which made me watch The Fosters after after Noah said today okay well and I kind of fell off the fosters um he made me go back because I wanted to see what Jordan Rodriguez was doing he was also in the latest bring it on movie we will not hold that against him outside of that movie he is a phenomenal actor very athletic very fit very uh good at playing intricate thought out simpletons <laughs> Like, he's very good at breaking that stereotype of like, oh, you think of me as just dumb, a dumb dancer dude, or a dumb, like, or a rebel with that cause. But I'm more than that. I'm dope. I'm dope. Look at kids. Like, he's very much can pull that off, and that's kind of the vibe that I get from Andrew. He's very much this, like, dumb jock who's like, I'm more than a dumb jock, but really kind of still a dumb jock. <laughs> So, I think that Twitter Funky is can add another layer to that and it'd be fun to watch, so. Allison, 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 she is our weirdo and arguably my favorite character in The Breakfast Club. She was the only one I really related to. The other guys were boys. I mean, now Iman's a girl, but I don't think I'd still relate to that character. Uh, now Brian's a girl, but I don't think I would still relate to that character. But Allison was kind of the weirdo, kind of quiet, never really against the grain, just so much as put in the outcast scenario and was like, okay, whatever, I guess I'll deal with it. I really appreciate that about her. Now, with that being said, I wanted to choose someone who was also like against the grain, a little awkward, a little quirky, a little so, and uh, people might disagree with me on this casting, but here we out, here we out. I chose Aquafina. I developed humor as a defense mechanism when I was like four, actually after the passing of my mom. Um, I wanted to be an emblem of joy and not an emblem of sorrow. Now, I know what you're thinking, Aquafina? Huh? The comedian? Yes, Aquafina the comedian. I don't doubt that she could fill the role. And then on top of that, her acting chops are amazing. And then we just moved to the States. Everything was different. Everyone was gone. It was just the three of us. It was hard for us too. I wanted to believe that it was a good thing. But all I saw was fear in your eyes. And I was confused and scared constantly because you never told me what was going on. I heard you thought Alma was the cook. Uh, ah. On the bright side, you're the talk of the party. People like your dress. Oh, I did that. Oh. Anna. You, you want to get out? Why? Yeah, pull, pull over now or I'm calling the cops. Right, pulling over now. Ah! ah! You should know, you're a bad driver. Shouldn't we uplift each other? One star. Have a good one. Oh, oh, holy shit. I saw her in this film called The Farewell and it showed me this whole new side of her that I never thought I would ever get to see because she usually gets, uh, she usually plays like in Crazy Rich Asians. In anything, she kind of plays the goofy character. Like she's even being cast as Scuttle for the um, <laughs> the the Little Mermaid, which is great. Gender bending Scuttle, I'm here for it. But you know, like she usually gets past gets cast as the goofy character. So when I saw the farewell, I was shooketh to my core because I didn't realize how great of an actress she actually was when given a different type of script to and a different type of character to play. I think that this character has enough of both worlds 
that will give her enough range for it. It is goofy, yes, a little bit, because she's the quirky kind of like comic relief in the situation of this like rom-com-ish scenario, but it's also kind of a deeper, twisted, revealed mechanism character that I think she would really pull off and has the depth and the range to fight. So that's why I chose Aquafina. Dream girl, you made my dream world, dreamland. I'm your number one fan forever. For our lead, our rebel, Bender. We need a rebel, okay? We need someone who is rebellious and against the grain and I just don't have I don't have another word. But I chose someone who no one would think. These the next two, Claire and Bender, the the main characters, I chose them because I didn't think anyone would expect me to choose them. And these two people are actually really good actresses, uh, actors and actresses. Um, they're both also happen to be exceptionally known for their musician skills. For Bender, I chose ASAP Rocky. Now I know what you're thinking. Can ASAP Rocky act? Yes, he can. I have seen him do it and it's funny of uh, how good he actually is when given the proper role. What the fuck did you really think about it? How, nigga? He killing all them Arcadas and shit? Nigga, that ain't all that gets killed. And the niggas saying he could drone strike Americans too. They killed an American working with them niggas in Yemen. And I think that he, this is a role that he can take and actually make his own. Um, I think that it'd be really interesting to see what he does with the character as just a straight badass rebel because Bender has like this, obviously he's the badass, he's the rebel, but he also like is kind of again more comedic relief for like, he's, he, he plays like the up to the comedic relief and that role and I think that ASAP Rocky could do that very well balancing the seriousness that it would take to play Bender in his trauma, but also the hilarity in his ridiculous badass behaviors. I think A$AP Rocky could balance that very well. Um, I've seen him act in other roles and I think that he, it's something that if you gave him a chance to really dive into the script, he would be able to make the character his own and even probably make it even better if possible. Patience, 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 I ain't got time, just go. Um, with that being said, I told you that our female lead, Claire, our last character, uh, the, the, the prom queen princess, goody two-shoe, all in pink, cowboy boot wearing queen, Molly Ringwald face, neck, head, ass, who will I ask to play her? I told you it would be a musician, someone you wouldn't expect. Um, I know a lot of people are like, is it Rihanna? No, it's not Rihanna. I know Rihanna could play anybody. She could play me if she wants to. She could literally jump through the camera, stab me and play me and I would say thank you. It is SZA, okay? Now I know what you're thinking. It, it, this, okay, this seems like a very big jump, okay? Cause SZA, while she is obviously a great singer, um, very stunning, obviously. Can she act? We've seen her do a small role on Insecure. Working on a Disney cruise. I got booked as their first black Ariel. Ooh. I tweeted about it, but I had three followers on my page. It's private. So why didn't you call or text anyone? Ain't no service on a cruise. But I did email my parents. Which was really interesting to see. And I think that it is a scenario, and it's probably why, one of the reasons why I also chose ASAP Rocky to play her like scene partner, essentially, because I feel like she would do an amazing job if she was to be comfortable in the role. I think A, Claire is a role that she could be very comfortable in because while she's not necessarily the quirky princess, she is more feminine and more like one with herself and I feel like that could play into that very well and she also has you know talked about insecurities in her music and things like that and I think that would really play into the character very well I wanted to give her ASAP Rocky to play off with someone who could help her balance and feel more comfortable within the role and I think that that would be really amazing if if it was directed by the right person and those two were put together in a scene, I think that they could play Claire and Bender perfectly. I think they could do it beautifully and add a very refreshing and new twist to it. I'm so embarrassed I could die. So 
that's why I chose SZA. I think that obviously her music is phenomenal um, and what she does and chooses to do in acting here for Alf, we will see, but I think that she could play the role of Claire uh, very well and that's where I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. That's where I'm going to finish this minority replacement video. Thank you for coming along on this journey. If you want to let me know some of your favorite all white casts that you want to recast, you want me to recast, then put it downstairs. Downstairs? Put it down in the comment section. Sorry, guys. My mind is blinking. Um, don't worry, friends. I will be back. So, stay tuned.